Hi everyone and welcome to Local Doctors on Call. I'm Candace McElia. Astigmatism is a very common vision disorder. One in three of us experience some form of the condition. The good news is slight amounts usually don't affect our vision and treatment is unnecessary. However, more pronounced effects can cause distorted or blurred vision. We might have trouble seeing fine detail and we may suffer from eye discomfort and rarely even headaches. To talk about astigmatism and to take your questions live is Dr. Brian Foster of the Eye Associates. Dr. Foster is a board certified ophthalmologist, fellowship trained corneal surgeon, and a bladeless laser cataract surgeon. The Eye Associates provides high quality routine medical, surgical, and optical eye care as well as cosmetic, dermatology, and hearing services for all ages in Sarasota, West Bradenton, East Bradenton, Ellington and Sun City Center. Welcome to the show, Dr. Yeah. Foster. Thanks so much for having me. Thank I'm you so much. Here. Yeah, we are too. Yeah. And this is a really interesting topic, astigmatism. I think there's a lot of mystery surrounding it. It really is. Yeah, uh, It's one of those words that everyone has heard that word before, but a lot of people don't know what it is. Uh, the way I really explain it is basically a curvature problem with the cornea, the clear front part of the eye. Uh, it's shaped a little bit more like a football than a basketball and that oblong shape actually causes blurred vision and so it's not a particularly danger, dangerous thing at all but it's something that if we ignore it either in glasses, contact lenses or surgically uh, then, then the blur is, stays in place. If we correct it, it we can uh, give you sharp vision. Now we talked a little bit earlier about how some of the symptoms could be blurred vision, rarely headaches, but what are some other symptoms that someone might um, go through if, they're ha if yeah, they have that? Definitely. Uh, well, any uh, eye exam uh, with a refraction uh, does a check for astigmatism. Okay. And in some cases, I'll have uh, patients referred to me that have a standard eye exam and the vision still isn't, isn't clear and we do some specialized testing, do some corneal mapping and some different things and we can even pick up very high levels of astigmatism or irregular astigmatism and that even can be a sign of other corneal conditions like keratoconus uh, or ectasia, some, some of these conditions that uh, often require treatment. So there's a lot, of, uh, a, a lot of eye doctors checking, pretty much every eye doctor checks for it, but there are some specialized types of astigmatism that uh, a more specialist type of cornea doctor would, would find. And anyone watching, of course, can come down and see you or any of the other doctors at the Eye Associates and, and find out and yeah. possibly get diagnosed if that's the case. Yeah, we're always looking for it. And I mean, the main thing, the door's always open, but if, if I have a patient that has had an eye exam and the glasses aren't working, um, and if there's, if there's something like that, I'd be happy to see him. Okay, yeah. great. Now we are taking your questions live, so if you have a question for Dr. Foster, feel free to give us a call and the number is 361-4675. We're talking about astigmatism, but any of your eye-related questions are absolutely welcome. Now, so how, how would someone be diagnosed for astigmatism when they come in to see you? Right, uh, well the first, the, the first line uh, diagnostic test with pretty much any eye exam is a refraction. Okay. And that basically uses a, a series of lenses to uh, essentially correct it and that uh, helps us determine that. But like I said, some, some other testing that we use like corneal mapping can pick up uh, some you know, different astigmatism that isn't picked up in a standard eye exam. Yeah. Okay. Great, we have our first question okay. and it's uh, from Patricia. What's your question, Patricia? Hi, um, I, I have been diagnosed with astigmatism and my eye tends to go out to the right and they say the muscle is shot. Um, I have to do exercise to try to strengthen that muscle and I just got glasses as of today and they're only for reading and I have eye exercise to do and they recommended that I go on the computer, it's like a $60 program. Do you have any recommendations as to what I can do for exercise of the eye? And the other concern I have is um, I have RP that has been diagnosed within my family. Um, that has not been a problem with me at this point, but I'm just trying to figure out what I can do for exercise that will help. Yeah. I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so RP, if any, the, our listeners don't know, that's actually a retinal, uh, uh, a hereditary retinal condition, but um, 
obviously other other folks not particularly related to RP do have a crossed eye and that's called atropia. Uh, and often astigmatism can lead to um, a turned eye because when you have one eye that's more blurry, uh, the brain doesn't, uh, has a more difficult time keeping both eyes, uh, you know, working together. So uh, as far as specific exercises, I think I probably would at least give your, your doctor's recommendation a try just to see um, there's a lot of different programs and, and some of the programs um, aren't validated by the scientific literature and, and some of them have some good evidence. So I think, uh, you know, I think it probably can't hurt to, to give the, the course a, a try and, and even cases where, you know, particular training isn't working, then you can even consider other options like, uh, like surgery to, uh, to realign the muscles. So uh, there's, there's a lot of different options that we have to treat. Um, a crossed eye. That's great information. Yeah. What can people do? Is there anything they can do to actually correct astigmatism? Uh, well, the, uh, the most common correction is glasses or contact lenses, uh, and that's something that obviously a lot of people wear. Um, the, uh, the thing that I'm really excited about are some of the other uh, newer treatments to correct it involving surgery. LASIK has been around for a long time. That's a very reliable way to correct it. Um, I had a little bit of astigmatism and some nearsightedness and I had LASIK on my own eyes and I'm very happy it's, it's gone. It's, you know, I see great without, <laughs> without glasses. Uh, but as far as, uh, as far as cataract surgery, we, we're uh, very excited about the bladeless laser. Uh, and that's something that, it, that is a very reliable way to correct the astigmatism. Now, bladeless laser. So what is that exactly? So uh, traditionally uh, with cataract surgery, uh, we use a blade to make uh, incisions on the cornea and to treat astigmatism. Okay. Um, we are very fortunate to have uh, very cutting edge technology that enables us to perform a lot of the incisions um, and a lot of the different steps of cataract surgery with even more precision than we were able to do just, you know, a few years ago. Mm. Uh, so that, that technology's uh, been uh, validated with several hundred thousand procedures worldwide. Um, and it's, but it's pretty recent to our area and that's something that we're really excited to be able to provide. Uh, and the laser, and we'll actually um, uh, show a video here in a little bit that actually gives you an idea how it treats the astigmatism. Wow, so. that's very interesting. Cutting yeah. edge stuff going on. Yeah. Um, how many people are affected by astigmatism, do you think? Is it pretty common? It's extremely common, and I would, I would really say it's probably the most common condition that I see in, in my office, and it, it's a condition. It's not particularly a disease, but it's something we're always looking for, and uh, the, the vast majority of the patients that I'm seeing have at least some small level of astigmatism. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, a, a lot of patients, it's not large enough that it really affects their vision, but, but if it is, then we, then we treat it either with glasses or contacts or uh, obviously with surrounding cataract surgery or LASIK, we always want to take it into account and treat it if it's, if it's there. Now, when it comes to the bladeless laser cataract surgery, there's some, I guess you already mentioned some big differences between how that used to be done and how it is done now. I think we have a graphic that we can kind okay. of talk about what the difference is, how it used to be and how it is now. Sure. So if you could kind of go over that, because I think people are, it's so new, they might not know all of the details of. Definitely, definitely. So uh, just to give you an idea, this is a, a, something we prepared that just kind of shows the difference between the two types of surgery. Uh, traditionally, uh, it's a manual surgery. We have uh, you know, a, a blade that makes an incision in the cornea. Uh, the laser actually does that for us in an even more precise manner. Um, there's also an opening in the uh, capsule which surrounds the cataract, and that's something that we do manually. Uh, and it's basically a circular opening. Uh, the laser does an even better job than I can do, uh, and it's a perfect circle every time. It's really amazing. Um, and the other thing uh, that, uh, that we do is, is astigmatism correction. We used to do that manually with the blade. Uh, the laser does a very uh, precise, uh, very beautiful uh, incision to correct uh, the astigmatism. So that's a nice, uh, a nice uh, advantage. Um, a lot of the actual cataract removal uh, is pretty similar in terms of, um, in terms of uh, using ultrasound technology to remove the lens itself. We still use ultrasound in both methods, but the nice thing about the laser is it actually uh, does what we call a, a pre-chop, and, and that's something that if anyone wants more information, um, I'd be happy to uh, 
have you uh, come to one of the lectures. We do cataract lectures. I think I have one actually this week. Um, and we show some more videos and kind of get into a little more details. Um, but the, the laser really does a lot of the steps that we used to do manually with even more precision. Great. So, yeah. Well, if you have any questions for Dr. Foster, please call us in and we'll take your questions live at 361-4675. And we'll be right back after this quick break. Welcome back to the show. We are with Dr. Brian Foster today from the Eye Associates talking about astigmatism and taking your questions live. So call us in at 361-4675. And before the break, we were talking a little bit about the seminars that you do at the Eye Associates. They are free seminars open to the public and you have one this week, but tell me a little bit about them. They're every yeah. week and what happens there? So uh, it's basically a big table um, and patients um, come and, and it's completely free. Uh, we have vision screenings where we actually check your vision and that helps me uh, get an idea as to how you're seeing with your current glasses. Um, and basically I try to make it as educational as possible and, and as informative as possible. Uh, provide plenty of time for questions. We show um, uh, just basically models of the eye. We show, I show you exactly what we're doing in, with cataract surgery. We show a video of a uh, start to finish procedure, completely unedited video. Uh, and that uh, I think patients really like to see that because it takes a lot of the mystery out of it. Uh, and just basically uh, make myself available to uh, answer any questions that people have. That's great. So, well, speaking yeah, of we questions, we have uh, Jack on the line with a question for Dr. Foster. Yes, hello? Hi. Yes, hello? Hi. Can you hear me? Are you there? Yes, I can. <laughs> my question is, my brother was recently diagnosed with astigmatism and also um, cataracts. And his, uh, consulting, his consultation said that he could have his astigmatism corrected in one eye, but the other guy, the other eye he had to... Uh, he could have surgery where he would enable him to read without glasses. And I'm wondering if he was, uh, if he got that story straight, is that possible to have the nearsightedness and the astigmatism corrected in one eye and have the other eye uh, corrected so that he could read without glasses? Um, yeah, that, that is definitely possible. Uh, the, a lot of people have fairly symmetrical astigmatism in both eyes, but um, just like, uh, you know, uh, maybe one shoe, shoe is a half size bigger than the other. Some people have more astigmatism in one eye than the other. And some people have enough of a difference where uh, a treatment is necessary in one eye and not in the other. So I think that's very plausible. Um, uh, we do have options at the time of cataract surgery to select a lens power based on the patient's needs. Uh, most people prefer to have d their best possible distance vision, but a lot of folks that are doing a lot of reading or have uh, a job that really requires a lot of very, uh, very good near vision can elect to uh, have a lens that sets the, uh, the focal point uh, fairly close in. So that, I think that sounds very plausible um, uh, and, and something that, you know, that, that to look at. Great, good information. Now, when it comes to the, um, the seminars that you all have, you, I know you, the Eye Associates has six locations. Mm -hmm. So are, do they vary at the locations or do you have them at just one place? Uh, we do. We have uh, basically a seminar every single week uh, at our main office, West, West Bradenton, our Point West campus. Uh, and that's, that's where I'll be uh, this Thursday afternoon. Uh, and uh, Dr. Silverman is, is there pretty often and, and Dr. McCabe. Um, I also do a seminar in Ellington, um, just uh, just east of the Outlet Mall, uh, off the highway there, at our office there. Uh, and so, definitely keep an eye out to check our website or um, you know check the newspaper because we try to make those uh, you know uh, publicize those. And people can yeah. just go to SightForLife.com and sign up yeah. or call, right? Definitely. Definitely. Okay, great. Yeah. Now, so let's talk about the bladeless laser surgery. Sure. That's very interesting, and I think one thing people might have a little concern with or, you know, trepidation, what kind of surgery is it? Is it painful? How long does it take? Sure. What type of a procedure is it? Yeah, so that's a great, yeah, great thing, uh, and, and that's 
basically my job is to reassure people uh, surrounding cataract surgery because it's normal to be anxious about it because it is surgery on your eyes. Um, and you know, we do a lot every week and we're, our, my staff is generally very good at, at making people as comfortable as they possibly can be. Um, the laser portion itself is, is before the, the uh, cataract removal portion and it only takes about 30 to 40 seconds to do the treatment. Um, the uh, machine itself uh, docks onto the eye with a very gentle suction uh, and it's, it's something that you really can't mess up. The patient, you know, can't really blink or, or really, you know, mess anything up. It's, it's, uh, it's something that's, that's very precise and very reliable. Wow. So, yeah. A big difference from what it used to be, right? Yeah, definitely. All definitely. right. I think we have another question on the line. Alex, what's your question? Uh, yeah. Um, I have astigmatism and then I have amblyopia on my right eye. I've been told that nobody would do operation on my astigmatism because of that amblyopia. And because I, they figured if something goes wrong, I would be um, legally blind. I suppose. Is that true? Um, you know, I think the amblyopia is something that for, for our listeners that don't know what that is. Another term that's often used for that is, is a lazy eye. And uh, what that is is basically a problem with brain development when you're young. If you have a blurred image, um, then the brain, the visual cortex, doesn't fully develop for that eye in particular. And fortunately, uh, oftentimes it's just in one eye, the other eye is fine. but you know, if that's something that isn't addressed in childhood, often that can lead to, you know, poor vision the rest of your life. Uh, often astigmatism can cause that, and that's something that, um, that, you know, because of the amblyopia, even correcting the astigmatism after the fact now, when you're older, it may not really uh, improve the vision. And so that's something, any surgery where we're looking at correcting the astigmatism, uh, we really want to know um, what's the best uh, visual outcome that we're going to achieve with a, like a surgical correction in particular. Uh, obviously, um, if, if you're going to you know, try to have surgery to correct the vision, we want to know the best possible outcome. And if, if the surgery won't fully address the vision problem, then it may not be a good idea. So that is a good question. Uh, it's something that uh, something that you definitely want to look at and you know I'd be happy to you know give you a second opinion or if, if you had any other questions let me know. Great. Now is there anything people can do to kind of prevent these eye issues from coming up later in their lives or any time in their lifetimes? Um, as far as astigmatism specific, specifically it's kind of one of those things that you're either going to get it or, or you're not. Um, there is an an interesting uh, exception to that, and that is with keratoconus, really bad astigmatism that can be irregular. It actually is associated with eye rubbing, and so I will have patients that uh, that have bad allergies and and really are a really you know very forceful eye rubbers, and that can that can make it worse. So any of my patients with keratoconus, I say you know remember when you're tempted to rub your eye, just you know smack your hand away because you don't want to do that. That's like one of those so. things that your mom told you when you were little, you know, yeah. stop doing that. It's going to do <laughs> yeah. something to you. Yeah. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. And now what about cataracts? Is that anything you can do preventative for that or? No, no preventative treatment for cataracts that we know of. There's a lot of smart people looking at research regarding that. Um, fortunately, our treatments are very safe and effective, but yeah, nothing that I know of that's, that's preventative for cataracts. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. We have Carl on the line with a question for Dr. Foster. Hi, Carl. Yes. Hello. Hi. Yep. Hello. Hi. It, yes. I, I had I had an operation for, for cataract and and everything came out real well, and then there was a, a spot that came in my right eye that my wife noticed and everything, and so uh, the doctor uh, ripped. Uh, removed, you're supposed to remove it, thought it might be, uh, you know, um, uh, well, whatever. And, uh, but as soon as I got out of the office that day, I, I went with double vision. And, uh, they said that I, there's nothing that can be done. Uh, it's just been, but I've seen several, two or three different doctors. And, uh, I do have double vision looking to the right or, or, or whatever. I just get tired. Is double vision all the way, and they said there's nothing they could do about it. Now, uh, what would you say? What happened there? Oh, that's really interesting. Um, 
You know, I, I really don't know for sure. I think I'd have to really examine you to know exactly a couple of things that come to mind. Um, you know, some, some folks, the, the, the eye muscles that move the eyes are, are, very, um, are very kind of finely tuned. And sometimes as we get older, those muscles can uh, not work quite as well. And some people can even develop double vision because of that. That's something that we could measure with a good eye exam. And it could be corrected even with glasses potentially or even surgery, uh, and that, but there are a lot of different types of double vision, and you know, I think you know, definitely a, a full evaluation would be in order, uh, because I, I really don't, there may be some treatment options. I think you may not be just stuck with it forever. <laughs> uh, so that's something that we could look into. Good question. All right, great. We're here with Dr. Brian Foster from the Eye Associates. We're going to take a quick break, but if you have any questions for Dr. Foster, please give us a call at 361-4675, and you can always call the Eye Associates, of course, and the phone number is 1-866-865-2020, and we'll be back after this break. Welcome back. We're here with Dr. Brian Foster from the Eye Associates talking about astigmatism and taking any of your questions live here on the show. The number is 361-4675. A little bit earlier, you mentioned that you did bring a video with you sure. that kind of shows an example of what the surgery looks like. So we're going to yeah. go ahead and show that. That would be great. Okay. You could talk us through it. Okay. So uh, it's, a, it's customized imaging, uh, and this is actually a true uh, patient's eye and a, a surgery we did not too long ago. And there's different screens. The screen on the left is actually a top-down view, kind of the surgeon's perspective of the eye. Mm -hmm. And there's different circles here. And uh, you can see the, the first circle that's being created is actually the cold uh, femtosecond laser. That's making that perfect circle uh, that I like to see so much. Um, that's the opening of the, of the uh, capsule and the cataract. And it doesn't take long, as you can see, we move directly into the chop, which is basically sectioning the cataract into different pieces. That helps uh, cataract removal with much less ultrasound energy uh, for more gentle uh, procedure. Uh, and that, that's, uh, that's something that, that's really nice uh, to see. Um, lastly, you have uh, the, uh, these little uh, curve, curvilinear uh, incisions in the top and bottom are the astigmatism correction. And then the... Uh, you can see the uh, inc incision on the right side of the screen is is our uh, main incision uh, that's done without without any blade. So, wow, yeah. I would imagine the technology is changing rapidly all the time. Is it yeah. difficult to kind of keep up with all that? Um, well, the great thing about this technology is that it's it's been proven worldwide, and um, the FDA uh, is you know, sometimes drags its feet, but it, it's basically, they wanted to make sure it was very safe for the U.S. population. And uh, once it's been approved for, uh, I think, at least two years now, and, and we've been several thousand procedures performed in the U.S. Uh, and so, and I've been very impressed with the, the safety of the technology. Uh, and the nice thing about it, too, is that as, as, we, uh, as we get more experience with the uh, technology, the, uh, the company that has the laser is, is the most uh, has the most lasers worldwide, and they're basically taking surgeons' feedback and making the uh, making the uh, equipment even better. So it's it's an evolution, and it's been really great. Wow! And yeah. now you at the the Eye Associates, you actually have some clinical studies going on right now um, when it comes to yeah. what is it? Exactly. What? Yeah, and there's actually a study that we're doing on astigmatism. Okay. Uh, there's some very high-powered uh, lens implants that correct astigmatism, and that's something that we're looking at uh, patient satisfaction. I will say those are really some of my happiest patients that uh, their entire life have really significant astigmatism and we correct it with a cataract surgery and they don't need glasses. It's a really nice thing. Uh, some other studies we're doing, lens implants for macular degeneration with the high magnification in the eye. It's a really nice uh, study we're looking at. Uh, and there's some other studies including blepharitis, which is a very common eyelid condition. Yeah. Uh, and so those are the, those are the things that uh, we're definitely enrolling patients for and we'd love to, to you know, see, see patients for that. Wow. 
Wow, that's interesting. And we were talking a little bit earlier to living in Florida with the bright sun, yeah. our eyes may be more prone to some of these um, things that come up. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. Anybody as far as living in the in the sunshine state, yeah. uh, <laughs> I recommend uh, ultraviolet protection as much as possible. Sunglasses. Um, either prescription or non-prescription, um, and ultraviolet A, ultraviolet B, that's what you want to be, you know, blocking. Okay, great. So for anyone who missed it earlier, we do want to remind you that there is a free seminar at the Eye Associates this week with Dr. Foster on Thursday, yeah. right, at 3.30. Yeah. Yep. And uh, what's the address of that location? It's your East yeah, Bradenton office? Yeah, uh, West, West Bradenton, West Bradenton. Uh, 6002 Point West Boulevard. Uh, and you can go on the website to get that, directions and all that, but we'd love to have you. Okay, great. And that's a weekly seminar, so to sign up for that, you can go to siteforlife.com or give them a call at 923-2020, right? Yep. All right, great. great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We actually went by pretty quick. We had some yeah. great questions. Yeah. And want to remind you, if you missed any portion of the show and you want to catch all the great information, this show is uh, re-aired on Sundays at 10.30 a.m. So it's a great way to kind of catch up and watch it from the beginning. Definitely. Right. Well, thank you mm -hmm. so much for joining us. Thank you, Dr. Foster, yeah. for being here. Yeah, it's been my pleasure. We great. appreciate it, and make sure to stop by and see all of the doctors at the Eye Associates at any of their six locations. And again, we'll give you that website one more time. It's siteforlife.com. Thank you so much, and have a great night.